The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Good morning, folks. This is the voice of Steve Rhodes filling in for Larry Pesavento uh, today on uh, Friday. Happy Friday uh, to you. If you're listening at 1 o'clock, I'm recording the show at 9 a.m. Uh, for today, and we'll make sure that it is a pertinent at uh, 1 o'clock as it is at uh, 9 o'clock. I love doing the 9 o'clock show because you've got the futures, markets, trading. We get to go play the liar's poker game, establish the uh, rules of the uh, road for the day. Uh, that means identify, you know, are the markets uh, generating any type of topping or bottoming signals? If so, where does that send price to or should send price to? And then where would price actually give you a change in trend signal? That's going to be different for each of the uh, different time frames that we trade out there. So we're going to take a look at the equity futures contract. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. So you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, you can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, just put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, as Ruby has done, any ping will do. And we're going to take a look at coffee and a cocoa for Cocoa Puffs. Or I guess I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs out there. But right now, let's take a look at what's going on inside the equity uh, markets. Well, inside the markets in general. Right now, Dow futures are uh, trading up 93 points. They're printing at 26,790 or 26,800. You've got the ES Mini up nearly 12 points at 29,83. That's about a half a percent, four tenths of a percent. NASDAQ is up 23, and the Russell 2000 is up eight. All the markets overseas, major markets, uh, closing in in the green going into a Friday. So maybe that's a, a bit of a signal out here. Even over, even over in the UK right now, it's turned just slightly positive. It's up three points out there. The DAX up 55 points, about a half a percent to the uh, upside. You've had uh, gold move from red to green. Right now it's up four bucks, trading out at 1529. We'll take a look at the key level of support as well as what went on on the 30 minute time frame chart to signal that, okay, it's going to at least bounce or bottom out there. Uh, silver is basically flat, trading out at 1880. And lights crude is off a dollar three trading at 55.27 you've got uh, the 30 year uh, note is uh, up five ticks and the uh, 10 year note is a 10 year 30 year bond a 10 year note is off uh, two ticks out there so let's begin by uh, taking a look at uh, what do we, let's take a look at the, the equity markets out here now or really let's take a look at what does stevie do when he sits down in front of his screen, how do I get my head wrapped around the message of the uh, markets out here? Now, I have several tools, uh, some proprietary tools that I've developed, but I like to look at my dials or what might be referred to as a market analyzer. What's a market analyzer? Well, market analyzer is taking a look at different markets. In this case here, you can see we were looking at the ES Mini, the NQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000, as well as gold and bonds. So those are the primary markets that I begin by taking a look at, as well as this screen that you and I just looked at, the black uh, screen to see what happened overseas. And this shows me on a 30 minute time frame uh, what's going on with Stevie's dial, Stevie's patterns out here, some of Stevie's patterns, uh, the Rose Momentum Indicator top and bottom, beautiful signals out here. So as we take a look at the equity markets, what we know is that the move higher that we've seen here this morning overnight has been pushing higher with less relative energy. Now, the cash market, we may see that energy disappear. Now, these are topping patterns or topping signals. They require bearish reversal candle to confirm and we'll go take a look at those key reversal sessions or maybe some bearish engulfing or evening star patterns out there for different time frames but all that a topping pattern should mean to you at least initially is that the sellers are going to go ahead and try to push price down to support the of course the opposite would be true like in the case of gold it did generate a uh, I believe a uh, roads momentum indicator bottoming signal as well and all that that means is that uh, price should try to push its way up to resistance. So here I start with that dial. I also take a look at a little bit larger time frame, such as daily and weekly. I'll switch over to those here just for a moment. We'll pull that over. And this takes a look at uh, the key levels here. It takes a look at Stevie's green slash red line, otherwise known as OUL, oscillator and change line support or resistance. And then you can have the daily, weekly, and monthly roads momentum indicator tops and bottoms. So what you're going to see here, we take a look at the daily time frames, and we have confirmed 
bottoming patterns inside the ES mini, the NQ, and the uh, Dow. That's on a daily time frame. On a weekly and in a monthly time frame, well, we have our topping signals. And what that tells us is just simply what we already know, which is that we are in a consolidating pattern. We, when I say we, I'm really referring not to you and me, but I'm referring to the markets that you and I trade out there. Now, consolidation patterns offer great trades for both sides both the bulls and the bears out there. Now, with regard to those consolidating patterns, before we go into the short-term time frames, what we do want to take a look at is the larger-term picture out there. Now, this chart here, these e-signal charts, are not going to show the roads momentum indicator bottom signals, but what they do show clearly here, take a look at the ES, the NQ, and the Dow, what they do show in yellow is the consolidating patterns out there. And uh, let me get rid of, I don't know why that moved to there, but oops, I'm referring to the NQ, it should really be up here at about the 77.88. But these yellow arrow, yellow rectangles, uh, in essence, represent the consolidation level. So for the ES Mini, that consolidation was really, come on, grab that and move on down there, around the 29.41-ish type level. So in the ES Mini, price has been consolidating for nearly a month between 28.15 and 29.41 out there. Now, the beauty of a consolidation is a break of the consolidation offers us a price move. It's called a measured move. It's equal to or greater than a consolidation. So up until yesterday, we didn't know was the market going to bust it to the upside or bust it to the downside. Whichever bust it would do generates for us that measured move signal. So in the ES mini, the downside move would have been to about the 2690 level. Well, yesterday there was a bust to the upside, a breakout of the consolidation. That brings in the 3067 ish area, 3066. We're not going to worry about this to the tick out here. And as long as today, as long as the ES mini closes above that 2941 level, you have a confirmed breakout of a consolidation. Inside the NQ, the same game plan is in place out here. And that game plan is that the NQ had been consolidating between 75, 73.50 and 77.88. Yesterday, a breakout. Today, some additional follow-through. Of course, what you want to see, this is a daily time frame chart, so it's really going to be about the close today. But if the NQ closes above 77.88, the ES above 29.41, and the Dow above 26.406, what that tells us is that we've got a real breakout. Now, that real breakout generates a measured move equal to or greater than the consolidation in the NQ you're looking at 82.23. Inside the uh, uh, Dow, you're looking at 27.516. We're just simply going to trade the charts and the information that they provide to you and I as it presents itself to us. That's all we can do. That's all we should do. That is exactly what we should be doing. So those are the larger term objectives. Of course, it's all going to be key, or what's going to be key is the end of day signal out there. Now, I mentioned on a short term basis out here that we saw some topping signals. So let's take a look at the ES mini. Let's go ahead and break that apart. And if we take a look at the ES mini, we can see price moving higher, doing less relative energy. You had the bearish engulfing, you had the bearish uh, Three River evening star pattern that's a 30 minute time frame as well as a key reversal session tells us that these sellers are trying to flex their muscles but their muscles won't be worth a hill of beans whatever hill of beans is worth until there's a close below 29.75.50 that's the bottom of its 30 minute TAS market profile that is level one support no breaky no breaky of that support price will uh, continue Moving higher. Steve Rhodes with TFN. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. This is Steve Rhodes filling in for Larry Pesavento. If you're listening at the uh, 1 o'clock time frame, we're recording this uh, this morning. It's now 918. Hey, look, on Monday, I'll also be filling in for Larry out there. So tune in uh, live between uh, 9 and 10 as we uh, pick apart what the uh, futures markets are communicating to you and I before the uh, open out here. Now, we were taking a look at the ES Mini on its 30-minute time frame chart and the Rhodes momentum indicator topping signal. Uh, we had the same type of pattern, although it was a bottoming signal inside of Goldilocks. And you really want to learn this pattern out here. There is nothing more reliable than this uh, tool to help you identify what the market is doing, to be able to call liars poker, to be able to buy bottoms and sell tops. That's totally different than uh, buying low and selling high out there. You can get your arse handed to you if you do that, but instead you want to be able to buy bottoms and sell tops. Now, inside of uh, gold, what we can see here is price was pushing lower, 30 minute time frame, into about six o'clock this morning. The reason why I take a look at six o'clock this morning, really began pushing lower at about 3 o'clock this morning, but there had, there had been no bullish reversal candle. You see, the buyers and sellers have but just one role for you and I each day, and that is to communicate, generate bullish or bearish reversal candles. Now, it's really important, those bullish or bearish reversal candles at the completion of a pattern, such as the Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom out there. And right here at 7 o'clock, at 6.30, I should say, at 6.30, you got your bullish engulfing candle and close above Stevie's red line out there. Now, for those folks that were intraday traders, whatever that might mean, to you out here for Goldilocks, you had your signal that buyers were ready. Buyers were ready to push price up into the 1522, 1527 level. Those were the profile, the 30 minute profiles that still are in place as we speak right now. And that's exactly uh, what took place after the uh, jobs Friday numbers were reported out there. Now, price is above 1527.90. It's 920. If in the next 10 minutes you see price close above that, that says that you should anticipate gold to continue to move higher. We can take a look at those levels. But first, what I want to do is, uh, is take a look at some instruments that were requested inside the tiger's den uh, that would be uh, cocoa that would be coffee and uh, sugar no sugar tonight in my coffee uh, there, there would never be sugar in my coffee because i just simply don't drink coffee out there i and i'm already jacked up 
without drinking coffee. Imagine that. Dad be bouncing off of the walls in here, and we don't want to do that, although I do have some nice soundproofing in here. Nobody would hear me bouncing off the walls. But if we do take a look at uh, Coco, this one here is for uh, Ruby. Ruby, as we take a look at Coco, here's what I know at this stage of the game, and that is that price is uh, consolidating in between its uh, daily set of profiles out there, down at the 22.06 and 22.98 level. Now, I would anticipate that price is going to make its way up to that 22.98. Why would Stevie anticipate that? Well, if we take a look at the right-hand panel chart out here, that's the daily time frame. You can see you've got some higher lows and you've got some higher highs out there. And with that being the case, you ought to see uh, Coco make its way up to 22.98. Now, above, above, a close above that, above, above that, hey, you can see he's already bouncing off the walls. But a close above the top of that daily profile would suggest 23.41 would be in the cards for you. So that's what Stevie sees when he takes a look at going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs out there. Now let's go take a look at uh, coffee. Let's go get some java. Well, that's orange juice, so we don't want to take a look at uh, orange juice. Not, not that we can't, but we uh, but uh, we wanted to look at coffee out here. And so as we take a look at coffee futures, we're also going to take a look at its uh, set of profiles. Now its profiles, let me just expand out the daily time frame out here. What we don't see is a series of higher lows and higher highs out there. And instead, what you can see with regard to Java, and we're taking a look at the December contract. Looks like December contract. Yeah. Uh, we're taking a look at price just consolidating really in between the bottom of its daily profile at 94.84 and the center of its profile. That's at 97.72. Now, the center of a profile or the box out there is both where buyers and sellers believe there's fair value within that trading range. Trading range being 94.84 to 99.88 out here. So, Coco looks like uh, it has the uh, giving you the signal that it wants to move higher. In the case of uh, Java, coffee out here, really not so much. Just kind of consolidating out here at the bottom. If price can close above 97.72, then you ought to see it move up to the 99. 99.88 to 100.58 level. And that is your morning Joe, so to speak. But hey, what would be morning Joe without, without a little bit of sugar out there? So we go take a look at uh, sugar. You've got it currently trading down four pennies out at uh, 10.93 out here. And in this case here, it ain't so sweet. It's not so sweet. Of course, it is pretty sweet out there. Hey, you gotta love, you gotta love my dentist. I spent a uh, I spent a good part of all last weekend. Great, great golfer. Um, you know, nothing like playing with a, with a pro. You'd think they, I always ask him, you know, how much dental work do you really do out there? And, uh, but uh, yeah, the, what I love most about Stevie, his, his name's also Steve, is uh, he loves chocolate. He's the only dentist I know that he encourages the use of sugar. But let's not uh, get too off track here. What we don't like about this sugar contract out here, and that question came in from one of our dinners who was asking about sugar. I think it was Mike K. And Mike, there's nothing sweet about this chart when we take a look at this because uh, price is below. He's got a red shoot, so to speak, a red bar. Price is below the bottom of its daily profile at 1137 out here. And uh, just continuing, it's below the weekly profiles out here, just suggesting that it wants to continue to move lower out there. So I don't see anything sweet about the uh, price of, uh, well, the price sugar is going down out there. And uh, maybe that'll be good for, uh, you know, I don't know who that's good for, but it's not good for the bulls out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at sugar, coffee, and uh, cocoa. Of course, I want to hear from you. Uh, so give us a call at 877-927-6648 or send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. We've got a question from uh, Terry in the Tiger's Den. Can we take a look at uh, high-grade copper, and we most certainly can. So let's go take a look at high-grade copper. We're looking at the December contract out here, and here's what we know about the doctor. The doctor is making a house call, and that house call says, hey, you know what? I want to go ahead, and I want to make a house call and run up to uh, address 2.6758 out there. And that's the uh, top of the weekly profile. What we can see here about the doctor is that it's trading above the uh, top of its uh, daily profile, and that's at 2.6187. So that's a 
a bullish move out here, and that says that price ought to make a run for the next resistance level. That's 2.6758. So as long as uh, copper stays above 2.6187, that's the top of that daily profile. Looks like you've got a, uh, a real breakout, possibly even a uh, bottom pattern out there. Give me a second. I think I can punch up the uh, doctor on my other charts just to see if there was any type of significant bottoming pattern out here. So I'm going to pull over the daily time frame, see what it is that we see. And I don't see any. Let me do a wave count to the uh, downside. And other than wave number four, you know, I don't have it. Price is right now at a previous level of, of uh, breakout support. Sometimes old support can become resistance. But if price can clear above 2.6435, uh, that continued move higher uh, should be underway when we take a look at high-grade copper. I'm still continuing to go with the call that the doctor wants to make a house call to the price level of 2.6758. That is the uh, doctor out there. And uh, so uh, Tarpon, too, says, yes, is that's why he only worked four days a week. Hey, Stevie only works four days a week, too. Not this Stevie, the other Stevie. She's got a cat make enough money if he only works three days a week. Hey, hey he, the, we must go to the same guy out there. Does he like sugar? Chocolate, anything chocolate. That's the beauty of traveling with them. Because Stevie's son here, uh, I've got a sweet tooth too. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. My sweet tooth is for you. I want to hear from you. We'll be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Steve Rhodes filling in for Larry Pesavento. We've got the cash markets open. Dow's up 48. S&P's up uh, three. Nasdaq up three. Russell's up three as well. A lot of threes out there. Wilshire 5,000. That's up 33 points out there. Let's keep those threes rolling. And uh, inside the uh, trannies, they're up. Uh, uh, it's got a three. 30, 30 points out there. So that works as uh, three. So uh, we had a request out here. This one coming in from who is this coming in from? Was this Jane? Uh, let's see. Who is this? This says uh, doesn't tell me. Uh, but the first name says Jane. So we're going to go with Jane B. And Jane wants to take a look at Roku. So let's go take a look at our three time frame charts out here for Roku. Currently trading right now at 165 and change out there. We're taking a look at the daily, weekly, and monthly uh, profiles out here. We can see prices trading above all of the resistance levels. Roku has not been trading long enough to get a monthly set of uh, profiles out here. But if we take a look at this, everything is free and clear to continue running to the upside. However, uh, Jane question Jane Curtin that's where we're gonna go with Jane's question was uh, just wondering if it's making a top well, and that's what the market profiles will not tell us. They will just simply tell us where support and resistance are and identify some kind of top. We've got to look to our other charts out here. So I'm going to go to the weekly time frame uh, chart, uh, Jane. And what we're going to notice is that uh, this week is going to be bar number nine. Bar number nine of a TD setup nine count out here. Now, uh, that means that we've seen nine successive weeks in a row where the close of each week was a close above the price four weeks prior. I know that's a mouthful. I slowed down just hopefully so that you could get it, but you don't have to worry about getting it just simply because it's automatically populated on my chart. And we'll take a look at the other TD nine counts to say, is it something pattern wise inside of Roku? Uh, for us to pay attention to? And the answer is, well, it appears that it is. If we take a look at the last top that we had inside of Roku, this was back in uh, March of 2019, March 8 specifically, what you can see is you had that TD9 count that formed in a little bit higher high the following week, March the 15th. Well, when a TD9 count tops or bottoms, you look for that top or bottom to occur on bars 8, 9, or 10. And there's really not bar 10, but the bar following bar 9 out there. And uh, in this case here, you had a bearish reversal signal, and price did go ahead and move lower for a period of about six weeks out there before it generated bullish morning star candle out here and then moved higher. The next time that we saw a TD set up 9 count, that was back in June of 2019. It was bar number 8. Pushed price down to Stevie's green line out there. That's support, by the way. And so support right now inside Roku would say it'd be 133-ish area. So the question is, is this uh, wondering if it's making a top? It's got a topping, a potential topping pattern in play. But it could be a higher high next week. Remember, the TD setup nine count would generate a uh, high or low. In this case, here we're looking at highs on bars eight, nine, which definitely that qualifies, or the bar following nine. Now, does it always work? No, it doesn't. But do you pay attention to it? Of course we do. We can take a look at the uh, last time you saw a nine count uh, back into the downside was back in December, December 7, 2018, the following week, a lower low low, but then we had a lower low the week after that. And that was a beautiful thing because it said, hey, that wasn't what was going to identify the bottom. So from a weekly perspective, Jane, uh, yeah, there's a signal that says, uh, yeah, possibility of a uh, top. Well, how about the monthly time frame? Right on the monthly chart, we don't have any kind of TAS profiles we can use, but we do have the ability to go take a look at its TD setup night count. And this is going to be month eight. Month eight, with a higher closing high above the high four bars earlier when you take a look at each bar out there. So this has got some potential for a top. And if we take a look at the daily time frame chart for Roku, uh, this chart here hasn't updated for today's activity. Uh, but what we do know or we can take a look at is the daily is saying not so fast, not just yet. You don't have a topping pattern that I can see. Well, let's go take a look at the wave count that's uh, measuring the waves to the upside. I don't have a topping signal there. That would be singing in the Key of G, by the way. Um, the price would need to close below 159.53. Stevie's green line out there inside of Roku to suggest a movement back to 133.15, where its last breakout occurred. So, Jane, in summary, yeah, Roku is generating some topping signals, potential topping signals on the monthly, the weekly. The daily is not 
prepared just yet out there. So if you're still in the stock, I don't know if you are, I'd say stay in the stock. I would not, uh, this is not generate any kind of a uh, sell signal for us. We got another question. This is coming in from uh, Michael. Michael R. Michael says, hey, good morning, Steve, and happy Friday. Well, happy Friday to you. What's your crystal ball C for the TLT? Well, if we go take a look at the TLT, what we really want to do is, well, I'll put the TLT up here just for blanks and giggles, but we're not going to really focus too much on the TLT. We're going to actually take a look at the 30-year Treasury bond out here, but trying to populate the uh, the uh, TLT for you just to see where profiles are at. Profiles help us to identify what price is doing. In this case here, the TLT would need to close below the bottom of that profile, 143.98, uh, Michael, in order to suggest that there's a change in trend. So price is just simply consolidating on the TLT within its daily profile between 143.98 and 146.71. A close above 146.71 says everything is still alive and well. Now, when we take a look at the TLT, it's really important. It's really important whether it's a TLT or some other T that you and I are taking a look at. And I don't mind a cup of tea, but if we do take a look at uh, what we should be looking at is how are treasury bonds trading in all the major currencies out there? Because it's not just you and I that uh, trade these little puppies. It is uh, traders around the globe. And that means when you're a trader over in uh, France right now, oh, yeah, well, you're probably partying. It's 930 plus five. Well, not just yet, but you're thinking about, hey, what am I doing tonight? Not that we're not thinking about what are we doing today. Stay, stay focused here, Steve-O. It is really important to understand what that trader that is trading in euros as their local currency, uh, what uh, T-bonds are doing out here. The same thing with regard to treasury bonds in yen and also inside of a great British pounds out there. Uh, they must be moving. Everybody must be a seller in order for selling to really catch on. Likewise, uh, buyers, if there is, you know, if it's moving higher in your local currency, you're not going to be a seller. You, you kind of get the picture out there it's a simple thing to take a look at just pretty much nobody does take a look at which means that you're trading with three-fourths of your hands however that works out behind your back we don't do that here at tfnn uh, stevie does not allow you to do that you are not you're uh, it's not possible you need to understand what the other guy is doing the other guy or gal out here now in the case of uh, treasury bonds again just consolidating between its profiles. So very much like the TLT. Here you're looking at 163 and 27, 30 seconds. That's your downside uh, support. Must be broken in order for the TLT to be say, yeah, maybe I need that TBT fix out there, which would be shorting the uh, Treasury out there. And with regard to uh, the uh, top of the profile, it's 165 and 2230 seconds. So right now, you've just got a consolidation, good old fashioned one, no sell signal out here as we speak just yet, Michael R. So thanks for taking the time to write in. Let me see if there's any other questions, because if you wrote in, I want to be able to answer your question. I don't have anything else out there. Let me take a look at repeat the TLT support you've got it that's coming from M in the Tiger's Den out there let me uh, move back here and get to that three time frame where is it three time frame there we go the TLT support level out here M is 143.98 that is the bottom of that uh, profile out there on a daily uh, basis uh, the question is uh, Ruby wants to go take a look at uh, high hogs out here so if we go take a look at hogs the December contract we're going to have to do that when we get back from this break but i want you to you know get some nice i love a nice piece of country ham don't you uh you know some of the best well you got the honey baked ham but you can't beat a cracker barrel country ham steve rhodes with tfnn we're gonna go take a look at hogs when we get back from this break If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to go take a look at uh, hogs out here. We're living high on the ham. And as we take a look at hogs, we're going to look at the uh, daily time frame out here, uh, Ruby. And what we can see is that price here is also consolidating in between its uh, daily profiles, the daily profile, the bottom of which is 6066. The top of which is 6641. Now, what you want to notice here, Ruby, is that the profile itself is bearish in structure. What do I mean by that? Let me do this here, folks, for you. I'm going to actually go ahead and turn off price. We're going to turn off price. I know you're going to say turn off price. Why would you do that? Because then we just have our profile. So we don't now we can just understand what's the profile communicating to you and I. And this is what we want to know. We're just taking a look at the daily. I've got both the daily and the weekly. The weekly are green. The daily are blue. So let's just take a look at the daily. We'll take a look at both. But what do we know about the daily profile? Well, we know that the bottom, that's where support is at. That's where buyers are. So when I say support, it tells us where buyers are lined up. That's at $60.66 out there. We also know the top of the box is where the snipers are at, where sellers are at. That's at $66.41. The center line is where we have both buyers and sellers, where they believe there's fair value with inside that range out there. Well, if there's more, if there's sellers and buyers, but so let's say, Sellers also present at the center of the box, which is closer to the top, then we have a bearish structure, meaning more sellers in that range of 64.49 to 66.41. Now, if you take a look at the weekly profile, it too has a bearish structured box, but at a higher level, meaning its resistance level or where sellers are at from a weekly time frame is at 69.30, the center of the box being 67.16. So it's really important to understand the structure of the profile, and it's really important because if price is able to close above a bearish structured box, nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. So now we turn price back on. We understand the lay of the land. We understand the football game, the virtual football game. These uh, these uh, profiles are nothing more than virtual first down markers, so to speak. And as we take a look at those first down markers in price, what do we know? We know that price is attempted to break out above where those snipers and sellers are. At 66.41, they've been unable to do that. They have attempted that for the last three days out there, today being day number three. And so that is your significant level of resistance. Ruby, it closed above 
that should bring 69-30 into play out here. But otherwise, you've just got your good old-fashioned, living high on the hog, uh, consolidation pattern that is in place out here. So hope that helps you out with regard to your trade for the December contract for hogs out there. Now let's take a look at the uh, markets. Go back here. You've got everything in the uh, red. Now that's not to be surprising. Uh, when we took a look at those early signals, right? We began the show. We said, what are the early signals telling us about buyers and sellers? We were looking at those roads momentum indicator topping patterns inside the ES mini. So let's just simply go back to it just so that we can understand what's going on right now. The 30 minute bar that doesn't complete until 10. It's now 9.45. Price is trading below the bottom of that profile, 29.75.53. If we only traded just the 30-minute time frame, a close below that level, we would have our chops, so to speak. We'd be licking our chops all the way down to about 29.37. 29.30, look, the most important thing for you and I in taking a look at any chart for any time frame is to be able to establish support and resistance. We can do that a couple of different ways. One, we can use those task market profiles. Extraordinary tool, excellent tool. I recommend it to be used by everybody, especially if you're an active trader out there. What else can we use for identifying support or resistance? We'll break out and break down levels. What's a great way to do that? Well, that TD setup nine count pattern is a wonderful way to do that. And that establishes for us the breakout and breakdown area. In this case here, the last time on a 30 minute Base. We saw nine consecutive closes above a close four bars earlier. Uh, well, that would take us back to the breakout level of 29.37. That would become the target, but only if we see price on a 30 minute basis close below that 29.75 level. Right now, that's what's being tested. In other words, the topping signal is working. When I say it's working, the first roll of any topping signal is that sellers are going to try to bust out support. And until they do that, there's been no change in trend. Now, we had those same topping signals on the 30-minute, on the 60-minute. Let's go check in on the 60-minute. It, too, is going to have a set of profiles, which it does. We can see that it is a bullish structured profile, by the way. The center of that box is closer to the bottom, the bottom being 29.73 and a quarter out there. That's what has been hit so far. And until price closes below that, if price did close below that, 29.25 would be the number. Otherwise, only thing that's going on at 947, and we knew this earlier this morning, was that sellers were trying to flex their muscle uh, when it was that jobs report that came out, generated the bearish reversal candle to say, hey, sellers are going to try to go bust out support. They haven't busted out support, just like we looked at gold on a daily basis. It hadn't busted out support. Now, in the ES Mini, it also had a Rhodes momentum indicator top on the two-hour time frame. That's 120 minutes. That uh, is the uh, current candle session. That's a key reversal candle. And this says you would have support at the 2968 level. So you've got your levels of support. You know your P's and Q's out there. And that's what you want to take a look at. On the five hour time frame for the ES Mini, what do we have out here? Well, we really don't have any kind of topping pattern. We thought we might have a TD setup nine count top, but that uh, vanished um, as we came into the nine o'clock hour during that jobs report uh, data. And now as long as price stays above Stevie's green line at 29.70. Well, it's a uh, nothing more than just holding key levels of support. Now, let's go take a look at the daily time frame just to put everything into perspective. Well, then that means we also have to look at the weekly. But if we take a look at the daily time frame, you can see the Rose Momentum Indicator top that formed out here. So a beautiful pattern. You want to learn that. Hey, subscribers get to learn it. Just go test drive mastery probability for the next 30 days. You've got no risk whatsoever as it comes with that money back guarantee. So you've got that top, that uh, bearish reversal candle. Price moving higher, doing less relative energy. Following along Stevie's uh, uh, very specific five, five, uh, five elements of the uh, top or bottom pattern. Here we can see back on the trading day of August 28th, you get that bullish reversal candle to confirm that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now we're in in day six of a TD setup nine count, likely we'll go on to day nine, but I don't can't guarantee that. But but that's what we'll be looking for is the next topping signal. With price being above Stevie's red line at 29.21, daily time frame says, eh, I'm not ready to move lower, not just yet. And then the weekly time frame. Now the weekly time frame, as we take a look at it, here's what we know. What we know is that price right now, this is the first week. This is the first week. If price closed about 29.60, here at 29.78. A close above 2960 says what to you as you take a look at this chart. If you're watching this on Tiger TV, 
If you're watching this on Tiger TV, and I know you are in the den, as you take a look at this chart right here, if you see this week, the ES Mini close above 29.60, what is that communicating to you as to where price will head? You're exactly right. Price will head back to that rising trend line that has contained price going back into 2018. And that would say that price would be targeting around the 30, 40, 70, 30, what's called 30, 50 type area. So any close above 2960 says price should move up to the resistance zone established by that rising trend line out there. So the weekly is really going to be a driver in the marketplace. Now, with regard to market breath, did somebody say market breath to me? Or did they just say, hey, Steve-O, seems like you might have bad breath. Now, that could be the uh, wheatgrass that you are smelling out there. But what we're going to do when we come back from this break is we're going to go take a look at the market breath for the S&P 500 for a daily and a weekly time frame uh, to see how many constituents. That's a big word, isn't it? Big word for Stevie. How many are trading above the top of their profile? How many are trading below the bottom? Do we have a weekly bullish crossover? That's the question. And we're going to find out the answer in just a few minutes. Steve Rhodes filling in for uh, Larry Pesavento. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Steve Rhodes filling in for Larry Pesavento. Uh, today's show is uh, being recorded between 9 and uh, 10. Uh, I'll fill in for Larry. I believe it's next Monday, Tuesday, and uh, Wednesday out there. So uh, please listen in uh, early. I love doing the morning show, especially um, especially the, the 9 to 10 show, because what we get to do is we get to take a look at the equity futures contracts, uh, see what signals are being presented to you and I to understand what the markets are likely to do at the uh, open and what levels to be watching for now before I went to that breakout there uh, I mentioned the market breadth and so I do want to share with you the market breadth here for the S&P 500 and today's close is important we just had a, a bullish crossover this week really took place uh, yesterday now what this tells us is on a weekly basis there are 203 instruments constituents inside the S&P 500 trade above the top of their box. When you trade above the top of their box, think about driving down the expressway. You know you come to a congestion area as soon as you pass it. It's the uh, pedal to the metal, so to speak. In other words, there's no more traffic. There's no more resistance in front of you. Uh, so you've got this bullish crossover today, and they're very important to pay attention to. You have 133 issues, constituents, trading below the bottom of the box. So when you have more above or below, that's where we get these crossovers. So that's really important. By the way, uh, the daily time frame that is in bullish mode this went to bullish mode on the 29th out there if we take a look at the shorter term time frame here's the four hour time frame uh, you've got bullish mode here and then the one hour time frame you've got bullish mode there so from a market breast standpoint for the S&P 500 everything here is set up in a bullish mode the same is true if we were to take a look at the NDX 100 out there so folks we're almost at the end of the show it's been great to be here with you I want you to have a fantastic fantastic uh, weekend, a fantastic uh, Friday. I want you to stay tuned because a great show is coming up next. The Tom and Tommy show, uh, Bull Bear Binary Options Hour, and they'll provide you with some great information as well. But have a great weekend. Uh, tune in next Monday, next Monday morning, 9 to 10. We'll do the same thing. We'll take a look at all those instruments that you want to take a look at as well. Signing off, sayonara, and we'll see you on Monday.